Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today, and welcome to the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society's webinar series. This webinar is produced, organized, and operated by the NYGNB. It is a live webinar, but a recording will be available to members on the NYGNB website at a later date. We'll have time for asking questions at the end, but don't hesitate to ask them as soon as they come up. Just type them into the question space of your webinar panel, and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. As a reminder, this presentation, including the contents, handout, slides, and all other materials associated with the lecture, are under copyright and may not be produced or shared without prior written permission of the speaker and the NYGNB. Just a few more items before we begin. Uh, make sure to keep an eye out for our email newsletter for more upcoming webinars, or periodically check the calendar section of our website. You can also stay up to date by following us on Facebook or Twitter, or our blog at the links below. Today's presentation is a look at 2018 and 2019 for the NYGNB, and our presenter is NYGNB President D. Joshua Taylor. Joshua Taylor is a nationally known and recognized genealogical author, lecturer, and researcher, and a frequent speaker at family history events across the globe. Joshua is a host on the PBS series Genealogy Roadshow and is an active member of the genealogical community. Joshua is the previous president of the Federation of Genealogical Societies and holds an MLS in archival management and an MA in history from Simmons College. And now I'm going to turn the microphone and screen over to Josh, who will begin the presentation. I'll be hanging out and monitoring the chat, so please feel free to type any questions or comments you may have during the presentation. And I'll either respond or we'll save your question for Josh at the end of the webinar. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Josh Taylor here from the NYGNB, and I really appreciate you joining us for a few moments as we look at what's ahead for the New York GNB in 2018 with a bit of a preview for 2019. Now, I'm excited because I have a few things to share with you that we've been working on for quite a while that we're going to be releasing this year. And so you're going to get a sneak peek of a couple of things that are not yet available to the, to the sort of wide audience, but we certainly want to introduce them to you and let you know exactly what's in store for you from the NYGNB this year and into the next year. So to start off, we're in the midst of our second annual NYGNB week, and this is a week where we should spend a lot of time with, with our members, with those who are not yet members. We offer free webinars. Today, we just completed a volunteer project where we had a, a series of volunteers in that were digitizing records, which we'll talk about in, in just a moment. But this week is really all about celebrating those of you who work on New York genealogy, New York biography, and New York family history. And so so we're very honored and, and glad you've joined us for a portion of NYG and B Week. One of the things that we'll be focusing on in the next year and, and the coming years is continuing to bring you additional programs and events. We've really worked to broaden the types of events that we offer our members and non-members. That includes things like online educational courses, which we'll be launching sometime this year. It includes book talks. It includes our attendance at national and regional conferences. It includes workshops hosted by the NYGNB, which will be in and out of the state of New York, and also special events where we bring together individuals around a common purpose to talk about New York stories and New York family history. Now, this is just a sampling of what's on the calendar thus far in 2018. And if you follow Sue Miller, our director of, of programs and outreach, you know that Sue is full of new ideas and always full of new programs. So I encourage you to make sure that you're following our blog and our Facebook page, as well as the website calendar for new programs that will be added throughout the year. But these items are already set up on the calendar, and I just wanted to talk about a few of them as examples of things that the NYGNB will be doing this year to help you in your research. The first, which occurs in just a few weeks, is a research trip to New York called Empire State Exploration. This is a new type of trip for the NYGNB. Our goal is to bring together those that have an interest in tracing their New York genealogy and headquartered from the NYGNB offices here on 44th Street and researching out of areas like the NYGNB materials that are at the New York Public Library, the Municipal Archives and other locations 
with the advantage of having consultations, if you wish, with other genealogists who can help you and guide you in your research. We're also, of course, including our very popular webinar series with things like uh, talks dealing with DNA and, and other resources. We're also repeating a workshop that we had last year by Tom Jones called Write It Up, and it was held in Syracuse, New York, or it was held in New York City last year, rather. This year, we're going to be in Syracuse, New York at, at the Pomeroy at Foundation's sort of location doing a, a seminar there and we're very grateful to them for hosting us and that's an opportunity for us to bring skills and resources for those of you that are curious about how to write up your family history to areas outside of, of New York City. And of course, in, in the end of the year, we'll be having our Research in Albany tour where we take you and, and literally one-on-one -on -one handhold you through the New York State Library, the New York State State Archives, and those fantastic facilities there. That is, is a research tour that always sells out and sells out early. So I recommend that if you're considering taking the, the sort of plunge and going on the trip, book now rather than wait because you might find yourself a sort of sold out of, of a space on that trip. We keep that number very, very limited so that we can continue to offer that one-on-one -on -one service to you throughout the days when we're visiting at the State Archives and the State Library in Albany. We're also this year, for the first time in many, many years, going to hold programs outside of New York. We'll be in California in April and we're going to be in Virginia, likely, in June. More information about these programs will be coming soon, but for those members that are living in California and Virginia, please make sure that you're following information about our upcoming events to make sure that we can spend some time with you at our events in California and Virginia during 2018. We're also ensuring that we maintain a high presence at other regional and national genealogical events. So our team will be at the popular Roots Tech Conference in February and March. In fact, we're a society sponsor this year, and Fred Wirtz, our director or manager of digital services, is going to be giving a, a, web, a, a talk all about some mapping projects we've been working on that you'll see in, in just a moment, and we'll be there to, to meet and sort of talk with anyone and, and answer New York questions. Sue Miller will be at the Ohio Genealogical Society Conference, and our team will also be at the National Genealogical Society Conference in May and the Federation of Geological Societies Conference in August. We also are going to increase something that we did a little bit last year, but we're going to do even more of that this year, and that are going to be programs that are based in New York City area schools. We haven't quite figured out how to travel outside of the New York City area, but if you have any ideas and, and have any sort of desires, we're, we're ready for them. We've done some, some Skypes and other things. But what we did last year is we actually talked to a, a couple of classes who had taken a DNA test but were wondering exactly what those results meant. And so we helped those students integrate their DNA results with sound research practices. And so we're going to be doing more and more of this throughout the year. The image there is actually the map of the class that we spoke to and all the areas of the world where their family was from. And if you look at that, it truly shows a very, very global perspective that we were able to sit down with those students. Of course, they all have a, a, a bit of a New York story, but they're from literally all over the globe. And so we plan to continue programs like that this year and into the, the coming years. We also want to ensure that we're providing resources and content at some of the conferences we visit. And so specifically at the NGS conference in Grand Rapids, we'll be sponsoring an entire track on Saturday that is dedicated to New York family history and genealogy. So these are our friends of the NYGNB and, and speakers who will be coming in and actually providing lectures on things like migration. Sue Miller will tackle using state censuses, using resources at the New York Public Library, and the NYGNB's collections. We'll have talks on the Erie Canal. I'll be doing a luncheon where I'm going to share some humorous stories of the misadventures that I have had in New York research, and I'll probably share a couple of, of misadventures that others have, have had as well, with their permission, of course. And we'll have a, a good time talking about how much fun and how frustrating, but fun, New York research can be for genealogists. Registration for this is, of course, separate. You have to register for the NGS conference at ngsgenealogy.org. Registration for that event is open, and so I'd encourage you to register. If, if you're going to be in, in Grand Rapids and plan to attend the conference, register now and make sure that you don't get sold out of, of some of those special events. 
We're also this year bringing back the New York State Family History Conference. This conference is held every other year, and so this is the year for NISFIC, as we call it internally. NISFIC will be held September 13th through the 15th, 2018, in Terrytown, New York. This is a new location for the conference. We plan to have this conference rotate throughout the state of New York in order to make sure that those who might not be able to travel to Syracuse or Rochester or, or other places that we might be holding the conference to enable them to actually attend and take part in NISFIC. We're very, very honored this year to have our top level sponsor of Living DNA and other sponsors, including My Heritage, Family Search, and Find My Past have also stepped up to help sponsor the program. Because of the support of great sponsors like Living DNA and MyHeritage and Family Search, we're able to have some new additions to the conference. So here's a couple of things we're doing differently than we have done previously at NISFIC conferences. The first is we're going to have an opening session. And in that session, we have some fun things planned. We have some door prizes set up. But we're really going to set the excitement and the bar high for a fun weekend of learning. We're going to have some expanded workshops and more workshops that give you the chance in a more structured environment to tackle some of the more difficult sessions in things that are longer than an hour. So look out for those expanded workshops. We're also introducing something called NISFIC Notes. The idea being that we want to actually give you part of your registration back to use as a note in the exhibit hall to purchase products. So everyone who registers will receive a certain amount of NISFIC notes, and you're able to spend that with one of the exhibitors in the vendor hall. And the location in Terrytown, everything is very, very compact, and so you'll be able to go right from a session over to, to the exhibit hall and then back out again as, as you're shuffling back from place to place. We're also looking at doing on Saturday a special Getting Started series, specifically for those that might live in the area that aren't necessarily sure they want to spend three days with genealogists. Why they wouldn't, we're not sure, but everyone has to start somewhere. And so having a day of, of programming that's really geared towards those just beginning their family journey and things that we can help them with, and we'll invite a couple of friends from the NYGNB to participate and give advice in some of those shorter sessions that'll be set up on, on Saturday. Registration for NISFIC is open now. If you go to nysfhc.newyorkfamilyhistory.org, you can register today and also make sure you don't get sold out of any of the luncheon and meal events and workshops because those do have limits on them and we anticipate they'll sell out quite quickly. We already have registrations that are really rolling in. A sampling of speakers that will be at the 2018 conference. We have uh, Dr. Jones will be there, Judy Russell, Jane Wilcox. We'll have members from the My Heritage team, the Living DNA team, the Find My Past team will be there, as well as the staff, of course, from the NYGNB, and many, many more. So we have a, lo a lot of, of friends and, and other genealogists associated with the NYGNB who will all be part of the 2018 New York State Family History Conference. Looking ahead in 2019, now none of this is set on a calendar yet, though it's on our, our planning calendar, we of course will return our research tours to places like Albany and, and New York City, but it's also possible you'll see us go somewhere else. We'd love to hear from you of where you want the NYGNB to visit for a research tour in 2019 and 2020. And for the first time, the NYGNB is looking at potentially doing some heritage tours. These would be set in New York City or perhaps somewhere overseas. We're looking at setting these up for 2019. Again, no places, no dates confirmed quite yet, but if you're interested in some of these, let us know. We're, we're more than happy to sort of give you a clue as to some of our, our future plans and, and get your feedback. And look out in, in Facebook and some of the other uh, researcher and other publications for what might be coming in terms of our heritage tours in 2019. And the picture that you see there is the most recent group from the Albany tour. And you can see they were very polite and posed for a picture in front of the Capitol before everyone was racing to the archives. It's very hard to get genealogists to, to stop and just take a moment before you jump in and, and start researching right away at, at New York's archives. You can always follow upcoming events on the NYGNB website. The website refresh that we released last year helped to make it easier for you as members to actually engage with the NYGNB and see some of the upcoming events. And you can register immediately from any of the events that you see listed 
those that are, are sponsored by the NYG and B, you can click the register now event and get yourself signed up so you're all set to attend some of our upcoming events. Last year, we launched the beginning of a paid research service, and in 2018, we'll be expanding that service. You know, we realize that not everyone can get to New York and do research on, on their own, and sometimes you need help. So we are here to help you as our members as much as possible. We offer for, for a fee consultations. Usually those are a half an hour or an hour. And we usually find that they start with a half an hour and usually go at a bit longer as, as you get the answers that you need for your, your research question. We also offer hourly research projects. We can assist you in preparing applications for lineage societies. And we also undertake very in-depth projects. We finished a couple last year that were pretty exciting where families wanted an entire branch of their tree traced for a, a gift, either for a holiday or for a birthday. And just because the family was in New York for a generation or two and then went elsewhere, we were able to help them and, and give a, a sort of remarkable narrative to, to a family that didn't really know much about their past. The other expansion in research services that you'll be seeing have to do with the collections of the NYGNB that are held at the New York Public Library. Specifically, our team is able to go over to the New York Public Library, pull those resources, and do research in those collections on your behalf. The key things there are, of course, those great surname and locality files that are very, very unique data that you're not going to find anywhere else that is always worth a couple of hours of research in to see what you might be able to find in the NYGNB collections that are housed at the New York Public Library. And so those services are absolutely available now for members as part of, of it, it's, its fee base, but you get a, a nice discount from your membership in searching in some of those collections. We also continue to host popular services like the records retrieval services. So if you know the exact call number of something you want at a public library or at the New York Historical Society, our team is more than happy to go down, make sure you, you find the exact item you need, take a copy of it, and, and get, get yourself that copy either digitally or, or over the mail. So if you live outside of New York and you can't actually get into some of these repositories, that's what the NYGMB is, is here to, to help you do. And there's a, a, a small records retrieval fee that sort of offsets our, our expenses in gathering those materials for you. Last year, we launched a YouTube Live series, and this year we're, we're going to continue that series, but we're going to switch to Facebook, and so we're going to call it Facebook Live, and we're going to hold these every other month, and these quickly became very, very popular programs where myself and Sue Miller would sit down to answer any and every question you might have about New York genealogy. Now, we didn't always have the exact answer that you wanted because, of course, research can be quite complicated, but these are, are free and open to, to all viewers to get an idea of how to do New York family history. And sometimes questions that were asked were, were very, very broad. Sometimes they were very, very specific. And so we work to collect questions a couple of days ahead of time, and then we answer them live as part of our Facebook Live presentation. If you miss these live, they'll be archived in other places, and you can always catch up on what happened on Facebook Live on our website at newyorkfamilyhistory.org. Now, this is, I'm sure, what a lot of you have been waiting for. You want to know, well, that's all great, Josh, but what's coming online? What can I search? So we have a lot of different types of records that are beginning to appear online. And these are, through, through the graciousness of our donors and our volunteers, we're being able to add things like the Holland Society of America's vertical files. In fact, those are the materials that our volunteers were digitizing just a few minutes ago, literally, in, in our offices. These are vertical files sorted by surname that have everything from compiled pedigrees to brief extracts from vital records and from church records. They're a phenomenal resource, and so you'll begin seeing those at NewYorkFamilyHistory.org over time. And this is through a, a special partnership with the Holland Society of America, and we're, we're grateful to them for allowing us the honor of digitizing th these, these amazing vertical files. We'll also continue working to index and digitize further religious records across New York. We work to develop partnerships with various denominations and various individuals that have a, a lot of these records and work as often as possible to capture these resources. If you know of a specific town or a specific county's records that you would like us to see if we can digitize, let us know. Send an email to webmaster at nygbs.org and let us know about those collections and we can begin the process to see what we might be able to do to preserve those records and bring them online for you to access. 
And the other big project that we have, which is an exciting announcement, some of you might know the name Gunther Poole. Gunther Poole was a trustee at the NYGNB. He was a librarian and he was very, very involved. And he spent his lifetime creating a biographical and portrait index to published county histories, local histories, and other resources all across the state of New York. There is more than 700,000 entries in this project. And Mr. Poole passed away some time ago, but we're very, very honored that the Poole family were able to work with them so that the New York Biographical and Portrait Index is coming home to the NYGNB and will be online for you to research during the, the second or third quarter of the year. So that'll be a source that not many people, of course, have, have looked at because it was his index, but it has been digitized and it's ready and available. So as soon as we have that online for you to search, we'll let you know. But we're very excited to bring the, the pool index online for the very, very first time to those researching in, in New York families and New York genealogy. And in addition to having digital images online, we will also inc include our indexing projects. We're going to focus these indexing projects on things like New York Vital Records and New York Religious Records. We also have a major statewide project that we can't talk about just yet because we're finalizing a few things. We hope to be able to reveal that in the next couple of months, but it's going to be a major statewide project that literally will allow you and the community to index records from nearly every county in New York that are extremely valuable and will be great resources for every New York genealogist. I'm, I'm really excited about this project and I wish I could tell you what we're doing, but you'll have to stay tuned, but know that there's a, a major statewide project that will be announced in 2018 that'll keep us very busy for the coming months and perhaps a couple of years. Last year we announced the creation of something called NYGNB Labs and we kept our first labs project a little bit quiet. The project was, was named around the office Mapping the Record and literally we were mapping the NYGNB record. Thanks to generous donations who helped to support those that worked on the project, we have a goal to map the entire run of our periodical, the New York Technological and Biographical Record. Currently, as of now, we have a beta form of the site up at labs.nygbs.org. And right now we have the publication years 2000 up to the present online. Again, this is beta form, so we are, we're just testing this out, but we wanted to make sure that we were able to share it with you because what you can do with the record is pretty exciting. For those of you who look at record articles, the record is one of the best resources to learn about new resources, new records, but also just because your family isn't the family that's being treated or being covered. That doesn't mean that the record can't offer you incredible resources. You never know what families might be near someone you you might you know you never know what you can find by following the same steps that another researcher took in the exact same town or the exact same county and so in order to make the record more accessible to you this is why we've worked to map the record on the beta site you can put in a a keyword of the title location author or the volume and from there it literally once you put something in so I'm going to put in orange here just for example and click submit and then it will drop pins specifically on the map of where those record articles have been found that tie to that specific location Again, we're excited to bring you this project, and you're the first people outside of the building to actually see uh, the NYG, the, the f sort of first fruits of NYGNB Labs. Once you click on the exact pin, it will identify at the bottom the various articles and their volume issue and page number where they're located in the record. Now, the articles themselves aren't directly linked into the record yet. That'll be a, a future step. But over time, you will see us add more and more years of past articles from the record to this database as we work to map the record. The incredible thing about looking at the record from this perspective is that you're looking at a geographic perspective of literally almost 150 years of scholarship relating to New York genealogy. Things that have been peer reviewed, that have solid citations, that have been written by some of New York's famous genealogists, all accessible to you, but this time you're not limited by knowing a surname, you can absolutely start doing a search by location. 
If you want to take a look at what locations are available, you can use the location dropdown. You can select the, the sort of city and, or the county that you're looking for or the town, and then start to view the different pins that, it, that appear for a specific area. Again, this project is in, is in beta form, so this is just the beginning of what you're going to see out, out of NYGNB Labs. But these, this is an example of the type of project that the NYGNB worked on in 2017, will continue in 2018, an idea of the direction that we're headed to help you be able to access New York resources at a more efficient and an easier way. So I'm excited about, about this project because it isn't just location in many ways. So if I can come up and say in title, I want anything in a record article title that might have the word church in it. I click the button, it's going to put it on the map, and I suddenly have a list of various church records that have appeared in the record as abstracts and locations. And I can zero in on an exact sort of town. I can keep it to, to a county. I can view the whole state. There's a lot I can do to begin to uncover some of the incredible resources that are sitting in the record. And you can stay tuned again to, to our website and the blog for more details about how the, how the record is, is being mapped and as we release more and more years. We have some more ready and in time, we're just working to upload them and get them into the system. The second uh, big digital project that I'm, I'm happy to announce today is something that we're calling the Huguenot Portal. For those of you who were involved in the NYGNB probably 10 years ago, I believe the fun started in the year 2001, individuals that were very, very interested in researching Staten Island's Huguenot families gave a, 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 a tremendous gift to the NYGNB with the hope of creating resources that can be used to trace the Huguenots of Staten Island. We've taken those resources and developed a portal that will be a free online resource that will have an interactive bibliography, it'll have resources to uncover the history and context of the Huguenots, and most importantly for us, it will allow you as visitors to submit biographies of families that you have connected to this amazing time in history and will interlink those together. And so this is made possible through the Huguenot Fund Literally, the biographies will allow us to link sources. It'll allow us to link biographies and families and associates and places. Now, we're not quite ready to officially press the launch button on the portal or even the beta button on the portal, but I wanted to give you just a, a preview of things that you can expect from the portal. Again, this is a, a free resource, the idea being that we want to encourage scholarship as much as possible about a particular topic. And so in this case, our first focus is the Huguenot of, of Staten Island. We'll have online articles, we'll have some free resources from the NYGNB publications. Each individual source will have its own section with details about that particular source. So you'll be able to find an, the author, the, the citation, and if that information has been identified online, we'll include a direct link to that resource online. So in this case, this particular article is available through JSTOR. So you can click there and find out how to access that article via JSTOR. So again, trying to give you access to those sources in addition to actually giving you the biographic information about where, where they're located. And some of the sources that were identified in this project, some of them are, are primary or original sources, things like like Bible records, others are our histories and, and other context. The key thing about the, the website and what we're doing with the portal is if you notice on the screen, that third line says related families, and there's some tags there of, of various surnames. We're working to actually bring together sources that identify specific families with the biography so that eventually you would be able to click on a surname and view all the sources that were, that were curated that include some, some information about that particular surname. And of course, we'll also include some of the tags for the biographies as well, so that you can start to add more and more content. Some of these, again, are very detailed, curated content that give you where you can find someone's exact naturalization record or someone's exact oath of allegiance within Colonial New York. And in time, you as, as a visitor will be able to add your own Huguenot biography. We'll work to, to curate those and make sure they're peer reviewed, and others will be able to access those resources. Now, if you don't have family from Staten Island, or you don't have Staten Island Huguenot specifically in your family tree, don't be despaired because 
this is the type of project, the type of initiative that the NYGNB is undertaking in 2018 and 2019 and in future years to help gather some of that key biographical content grounded in some solid genealogical sources. So we're very curious to hear what you want our next focus to be. Now that we, we've sort of worked on the Staten Island Huguenots, the question is, what group and what place might we look on next? So feel free to share those with us in the, in the coming months and give us a, a, a few more months to, to get this released. But just think of th this could be whatever topic you're working on as, as a mass project. So another thing that, that, that's forthcoming in 2018 that will be with us for many, many years to come. We also will continue improvements to NewYorkFamilyHistory.org, adding additional online content, putting up more blog posts, having new knowledge base articles, and we'll be working on enhancements to our e-library, making it even easier for you to access and even easier for you to search throughout the year. We've already worked in, in the past year to make sure that your member dashboard gets you the key content that you need as a member of the NYGNB. For those members of the NYGNB, you have quick access to the e-library, you have access to read the latest issues of the record and the New York researcher, access to help on using the website, community forum where you can interact with other members, and then a listing of upcoming calendar events. We've also made it even easier for you to manage your NYGNB membership. From your management portal, you can update your mailing address, you can change your password, you can view discount codes, you can do everything you need to, to harness the power of your membership through the account management portal. You can even renew your account online, you can set up your account to auto-renew so that I don't have to remember every time I get the renew notice to go in and, and put in my information, I can set that auto-renew. And I can also view past memberships and even past purchases within the, the account management. And speaking of, of purchases, if you haven't already seen the revised edition of the New York Family History Research Guide and Gazetteer, so we finished this at the very end of 2017, and we are just waiting for them to arrive back from the printer. As soon as they're here, we're going to have a, a, a team day where we all get, get all the pre-orders out in the mail. We've revised this 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 important work and separated it into the two volumes to help make it more portable for you. We we added some heavier paper so that you, you can take it with you. We've also updated information and corrections we've received since the publication was first released a few years ago, including massive revisions to the Vital Records Guide as well as the County Guides over time as we update information as we're made aware of it. We also, for the first time at the end of the year, released a digital PDF for, for members only. At the moment, this is only available to those who purchased a previous copy of the New York Family History Research Guide and Gazetteer. So if you purchased a previous copy, you're certainly eligible to, to, have a, to, to purchase a copy of the digital PDF. Just if you haven't gotten a, an email about it, email membership at nygbs.org, and Jen Davis, our, our membership director, can, can look at that and make sure that you are able to purchase that digital PDF version. For me, as, as a researcher, I love the books. I, I will never get rid of books, but that PDF is such a quick and efficient way to search you know, the 800 pages of content all about New York family history and, and New York genealogy. The new layout is, is, is meant to be, to be easier for you to read and easier for you to find sort of specific sections within the book. The tables have been laid out. Again, we've updated information as changes have happened relating to access to vital records and online materials. And same things with the county guides as we've received more information, corrections over time, and also updated all those URLs within, within the documents there to help you have the most recent contact information for those important organizations across New York. And very, very importantly, we're keeping a watchful eye on records access, both in New York City as well as New York State. We were, we were very, very grateful for many members of the community that, that, that gathered in, in October and November when we had the issue with the New York City of Vital Records. We still do not have a resolution for that, but we're keeping a watchful eye, a, a daily eye on that. And that's going to be something we're going to really pay attention to in 2018, 2019, and in the future, ensuring that your access and our access to these important records across the city and across the state, ensuring that nothing happens to that access. So we'll, we'll be keeping a very, very watchful eye, and we'll keep you up to date when anything happens to those records that we might need your help and, and to make your voice heard again about how important those records are for you to access. 
Now, looking ahead towards 2019, in 2019, the NYGNB will turn 150 years old, and we're very excited about marking this momentous occasion in our history. We'll spend some time celebrating the history of the organization. We'll release some very, very special commemorative anniversary publications. We'll hold some special events. We'll continue adding digital offerings, and we'll have all sorts of opportunities for you to support us to ensure that we're around for the next 150 years. We marked the beginning of our 150th sort of celebration a year early, earlier this week, by restoring part of the stained glass window that used to be in the NYGNB library in the NYGNB offices. So it's the first thing that you see now when you visit the NYGNB. You can help in, the, in these initiatives. There, there's, there's a lot you can do. You can volunteer. You can tell others about what we're doing. We also now have the ability for you to give a reoccurring donation every month. So if, if you said, you know, I, sure, I, I don't mind giving the NYGNB 5 or $10 a, a month, you can set that up automatically. What we're suggesting that in celebration of 150, you consider giving $18.69 per month. If you are, are a fanatic about your, your checkbook and you want everything that's possible to end in zeros, you can you can put that at 20 or at 15, but that's our suggestion of, of 1869. If if every member sort of gave that every every month, we would be able to do so many more things than we're already working on. And just as, as a hello from us at the team and a thanks, uh, that, that that's part of our team there. When we had our DNA seminar in October, that the final activity was extracting DNA from, from strawberries. And so we had to make sure that our team, you know, even though not everyone's a genealogist, everyone has an interest and a love and a passion for what we do. So everyone got the chance to, to do the, the same uh, activity that our other volunteers did. So we appreciate your support, your continued membership, and all of the help that you give the NYGNB uh, over the year. And, and we, we can't wait to, to work through 2018 and move forward into 2019. With that, I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have, hear your ideas, and, and we'll, we'll see what we have waiting for us. Okay. Hey, Josh, and hi, everyone. Uh, please let me know if my audio is okay. Um, uh, thank you, everyone, for listening, and thanks, Josh, for a great presentation. Uh, so we do have a few questions here. Uh, if anyone else has any others, uh, feel free to type them in as you think of them, uh, and, and we can get to those right away. Uh, so, okay, so our first question is from Dorothy, uh, and she would like to know, what is the status of Find My Past's efforts to digitize the Archdiocese of New York's records? Okay, and, uh, so Dorothy, that's a great question um, about the status, and I, you know, I can only tell you from, from what I hear from Find My Past, and that is it is it is a work in progress, and I think we might hear something very shortly on that, but I, I, I can't can't guarantee when we might hear something. I know that it is an ongoing project, but unfortunately, I can't give you a, a date or, or a time frame even of when that that might come. But I know they're working on it. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, so our next question comes from Rachel, uh, and this is a little bit more of a general question, but I think it's a good one to ask. Uh, so uh, what resources does the NYGNB have on uh, tips for researching at the New York Public Library? Um, she's been there twice and hasn't quite found what she's looking for, and it's obviously a very big building, so it can be difficult uh, to use. <laughs> Uh, so what would be your suggestions there, Josh? So suggestions on, on New York Public Library and, and how the NYGNB can help. There, there's a couple of, of things. First is there, there are knowledge base articles. If you go in the knowledge base and sort of look for New York Public Library, there's knowledge base articles that point out specific collections. Also, when you go to our website and you go under collections and you go to the NYNG mat GNB materials that are at the New York Public Library, that list identifies some of the major collections, things that are in the manuscripts department that you might be missing just from a, an initial search. Even better, though, is to look out for some of our programs. We, a couple of times a year, do an actual tour, an interactive tour of the New York Public Library for genealogists, where Sue or, or myself or other members of the team actually will take a group over and sort of show you step by step how to get the most out of researching at the New York Public Library. So I would look out for one of those tours, in addition to the, the online resources, but one of those in-person tours is, is one of the best ways to actually learn how to use the resources at the New York Public Library. 
All right, great, thanks. Uh, and and so we have one other question that that is uh, just Lana saying that she missed um, some of the information on the calendar and and on on the upcoming events. Uh, and and she was asking for a recap. Um, but I, I will just uh, point everybody to our website. Uh, all our calendar has you know both a list form and a calendar form, and you know that's the best place to find everything that's coming up. And uh, that address is uh, nygbs.org. Uh, forward slash events, uh, and you'll see it right there. And and if you just go to anywhere on our website, you'll see the events in the main menu uh, of, of the of the section there. Um, and so we just had one come in from uh, uh, Patricia. Um, and so she, this is I guess more of a general question, uh, but um, she was wondering about uh, uh, family moving between Canada and New York. Um, and you know, do do we have any records specific to this movement? Um, but maybe more generally, what, what's a good approach to trying to find that? Because I know sometimes the border crossings can be a little bit tricky. Yeah, the, the border crossings. It really depends on the time period. I'm I'm assuming it's probably before the 1890s, before they they were actually documented. W one way to sort of trace families of that period, you can look at newspapers on on other side of the border. You can also look at, at land records. Uh, we have a couple of, of really good articles on on that that might help you. What I would actually do is I'd recommend that you do a search of the NYGNB record archives and see if there are examples of others who have traced families in the same sort of counties in New York and the same areas in Canada that those actually appeared as published articles in the record. And that could be a good idea of you to find some specific sources you might want to take a look at to trace the, those families across the border. So I'd, I'd look at the record and, and the archives of the record and see what authors have treated that exact same subject and some of the resources that they use in some of those original records. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, and it looks like that is it uh, for all of our questions so far. Um, so thank you again, uh, everybody, for attending. Uh, and if you do have any further questions, feel free to email us. Uh, you can email me at webmaster at nygbs.org, uh, and I can forward it on to the appropriate person. Um, but yeah, thanks again for tuning in, and, and thank you, Josh, uh, for a great presentation. Thanks for hosting, Fred, and, and we'll see you all throughout the year.